is it important for the eye dr l sofia your membership number ma'am sir uh, 17229 right thank you good afternoon one and all i am dr sofia from the institute of ophthalmology joseph i hospital trichy the topic for today's presentation is uh, body mass index is it important for the eye no financial disclosures obesity in india has reached epidemic proportions in the 21st century with morbid obesity affecting 5% of the country's population Internationally, a body mass index of more than 25 kilograms per meter squared is considered to be overweight, whereas a BMI of more than 30 is considered obese. Overweight and obesity have become global epidemics. Uh, we are all well aware of the effects of obesity and overweight on the systemic health. However, less is known about the effect of these on the eye. Our concern is: Is there a relationship between obesity and elevated intraocular pressure? Some epidemiological studies have examined a possible relationship between BMI and IOP. Our aim here is to evaluate an association between BMI and IOP in men and women. This was an observation study conducted on 200 consecutive outpatients at a tertiary eye care hospital in South India. The institution ethics committee approved the conduct of the study. Willful verbal consent was obtained from all the patients. Uh, these were our inclusion and exclusion criteria. The parameters studied included the vision by Snellen's chart, the intraocular pressure measurement by non-contact tonometer, central corneal thickness by optical pachymetry. A corneal thickness of 540 was taken as normal, and pressures were adjusted accordingly. A slit lamp examination of the anterior and posterior segment was done. The weight in kilograms and height in meters was measured. The BMI was calculated by the formula weight in kilograms divided by the height in square meters. And the following BMI categories were used. Uh, BMI less than 18.5 was categorized as underweight. 18.5 to 24.9 is normal. 25 to 29 is overweight. And a BMI more than 30 was categorized as obese. And for statistical analysis, we have used the chi-square test, the Pearson score listing coefficient, and a p-value of less than 0.05 was considered statistically significant. Our results. This table shows the uh, mean age, intraocular pressure, CCT, and the body mass index in the study individuals. And out of the 200 participants, uh, we had 90 males and 110 females. The mean age was 50.32, mean IOP 15.78, the mean CCT was 529.48, and the mean BMI was 25.06. And we found that for all these three, uh, four parameters, the values in females was uh, uh, higher when compared to males. This table shows the age distribution of the study individuals in the different BMI subcategories. Of the uh, 200 participants, there were 94 who uh, fell in the normal category, 67 were overweight, and 33 were obese. And out of the 33 who were obese, we found that uh, sorry, uh, 25, uh, 25 of them were in the age group of more than 50 years. And this difference was found to be statistically significant. And the scatter plot showing a, a possible correlation between the BMI and age in the study individuals, we found a statistically significant positive correlation. Uh, this table it showed the gender distribution of the study individuals in the different BMI categories. There was an almost an equal number of males and females in the different categories, which is not of any statistical significance. A uh, table which shows the mean IOP in the different BMI categories, uh, we found that an, a trend with an increasing IOP as the BMI increased. A uh, scatter plot which showed a possible correlation between BMI and intraocular pressure in the study uh, study individuals. We found a statistically significant positive correlation. A correlation between BMI and CCT was also studied, but there was a weak positive correlation. However, was not statistically significant. Out of the 200 subjects, 70 of them have uh, had diabetes, hypertension, or both, and uh, 38 out of the 70, that is 54%, uh, had a BMI of more than 25. That is, they were either overweight or obese. According to the current definition for obesity in the Asia Pacific region, adults are considered to be overweight at a BMI of more than 23 and obese at a BMI of more than 25. We have used BMI values of more than 25 and more than 30 respectively to define overweight and obesity in our population. In the current study, we found that greater the age, the higher was the BMI, especially so in individuals above 50 years of age. In a study by Gordon et al, the authors found that with aging, increased BMI was noted until 60 years of age, after which it tended to show a uh, decrease. The mean BMI in our study was 25.06. The mean intraocular pressure was 15.78. Uh, women were found to have a higher BMI as well as a higher IOP than men, a finding that was consistent with that reported in previous studies. The BMI was also positively correlated to IOP in our study. 
uh, there was a trend towards increasing IOPS BMI increased. This was similar to results by Cohen et al., wherein the authors found a significant gradual increase in IOP for each increase in BMI subcategory. There was also a weak positive correlation between BMI and CCT. Uh, something like the YASA study, which showed a higher BMI, especially in diabetics, was found to be associated with a greater CCT. A possible direct effect of obesity causing an increase in intraocular pressure could be because of excess or vital fat, resulting in increased orbital pressure or increased red cell count hemoglobin hematocrit with increased blood viscosity, the resultant increased episcleral venous pressure with the resulting in um, increased resistance to aqueous outflow, thereby increasing the intraocular pressure. My conclusion, in both men and women, higher BMI is positively correlated with higher IOP, with obesity being a possible risk factor for high IOP. Abnormal BMI associated with aging, hypertension, and diabetes can compound this phenomenon. A regression analysis for age, diabetes, and hypertension will help to establish BMI as an independent risk factor for raised IOP. And uh, is BMI really important to the eye? Yeah, with our study showing a trend towards increasing IOP as BMI increases, the answer is possibly yes. However, a normal IOP range according to the BMI may need to be defined from population-based studies. And at present, I would conclude by saying obesity may be included as one among other risk factors in the patient being assessed for glaucoma. Thank you. You didn't have any control subjects for this? Uh, no, sir. We are taking some uh, quantitative old patients, sir. We have not told them. Uh, there is a general population who is present to our hospital, sir. Who present to the glaucoma clinic? No, sir. To the general OPD, sir. We are not specifically glaucoma department, sir. I see. Sorry. No, no. You said uh, sir. all these patients had some rise of intraocular pressure, no? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we have assessed patients from uh, who are presented to the outpatient department, sir. Okay. So it is a consecutive 200 patients randomly from the general OPD, sir. I see. Okay, okay. Then, then, thank you. 